here today to talk to you a little lot about why the portfolio is so very special to us. Uh, you know, and as we were putting together the materials for this presentation, we uh, we realized that there was a lot of stuff that we could have told you about that we could have put together. Uh, you know, for example, we could have put together a slide to show that for uh, I guess since our reintroduction in, since 2014, we've won 150 awards globally for our vehicles. Uh, we could have sat here and told you about our dealer network and our 360 marketing plan. We could have told you about our sales and all that. But I figured, why don't we keep this short and sweet and get to the product as soon as we possibly can. So uh, if you bear with me a little bit, let's just walk you through a couple of things here and uh, tell you uh, about why we're here. So you're probably wondering maybe why we decided to take a 505 horsepower Italian SUV and bring it through Texas, of all places. Um, it's actually the perfect place, uh, and I'll tell you the story here in a second. So as you're probably familiar by now, Stelvio gets its name from a mountain passage in the Italian Alps, but we didn't give Stelvio its name just because of its geographical location and proximity to where the vehicle is built. Stelvio uh, has its name because it has what it takes to compete on that track and other winding roads and delivers unrivaled performance and driving dynamics. So you're talking things such as best-in-class horsepower and torque, Best in class series 60, top speed, power to weight ratio, a perfect 50 50 weight distribution, and that's all in its base configuration with our two liter engine, not the quadrifold. So I think it ties in perfectly to be here at the Circuit of the Americas today. 3.41 miles on over 20 turns, and the only FIA certified grade one track in the United States. The perfect place to put through its paces the fastest vehicle around the Nurburgring in a production four door utility vehicle form. Now speaking of F1, uh, you may have returned that uh, you may have heard that Alfa Romeo is returning to the class after over a 30 year absence. So I'll remind you that in 1950 and 51, Alfa Romeo actually won the championship in those two years. So in less than a month, we'll be kicking off the season, and two young drivers on behalf of Alfa Romeo and Sauber will have the opportunity to bring yet another championship. But that's a driving experience for a different day. Today, we're here to drive a four-door vehicle that has a four-leaf clover on its side. Not that. That, for anyone who's not an Alfisti in the audience, is a 1963 Giulia Ti Super. And I think when most people think about high-performance Alfa Romeos, they maybe think of an 8C or a GTV or a GTA or something like that. But uh, a sedan like this doesn't really come to mind. This actually happened to be the first production Alfa Romeo to wear what is what we call the Quadrifolio Verde, that is the four-leaf clover on the side. And this is the latest generation to wear that badge proudly. And walk you through a couple of things that make this vehicle unique compared with uh, other Stelvios would be the uh, unique front and rear performance fascias that were called performance, uh, sorry, performance aggressively styled fascias. Um, we have hood vents on top that suggest there's something maybe a little bit hotter underneath the bonnet. At all four corners you have Heritage-inspired five-hole aluminum wheels, uh, which are 20 by 10s in the rears, 20 by 9s up fronts, all wrapped in Pirelli high-performance tires. Uh, on the inside, if you're familiar with the Julius Sports sedan, you're going to find a familiar environment. Um, leather and Alcantara wrap aggressively bolstering the seats, extensive use of real carbon fiber. You have column-mounted aluminum paddle shifters, leather wrap IP and door uppers with accent stitching, large display screens, pretty much everything that you would expect to be in a vehicle that can dominate on the track and also deliver a daily driving experience and comfort. If we walk you through some of the technology that we have and some of the mechanics that we have on the vehicle, right up front, this is the first time that we've ever paired our Q4 all-wheel drive system with Alfa Romeo's most powerful production engine ever. That system has the ability under normal driving uh, conditions to send 100% of the torque to the rear wheels, and when it's called for, it can send up to 60% of the torque to the front. The standard adaptive suspension has three settings, and has uh, features of uh, adaptive dampers that can react in milliseconds to changing road and track conditions. Our torque vectoring rear, uh, rear differential features uh, twin electromechanical clutches that enable torque split to either one of the wheels So in the rear, so you have the ability to send up to 50% of the torque on the left side, for example, over to the right side. Chassis domain control, you may have heard of this before, but this is essentially the brain of the vehicle. It's a module that controls many of the uh, dynamic systems within the vehicle, such as uh, your traction control, your stability control, your integrated braking system, and your adaptive suspension. Standard on all quadrifolios are six piston Brembo performance brakes with four pistons in the rear. We have available carbon uh, ceramic brakes 
uh, which help dissipate heat more, eas more easily, um, increase fade resistance, and of course, weigh less. Uh, if you've driven an Alfa Romeo recently, you'll be familiar with our light and nimble steering that's very direct, 12.01 steering ratio, ratio combined with our semi-virtual steering axis, um, really gives the driver confidence and makes for a vehicle that feels very well planted on the, on the road and on the track. And of course, our DNA Pro driving mode selector with race mode. Um, so this vehicle is equipped just as all other Alfa Romeos are with DNA. D is more your dynamic driving experience, more your spirited drive, and is middle of the road everyday driving, A is for advanced efficiency, and can also do cylinder deactivation in the A mode. When you flip it into race mode, the active exhaust opens, the nannies turn off, your stability and traction control turns off, and the vehicle really comes to life with that one-two bark and the shift that you'll hear today when we're out here on the road and on the track. But that's all well and great, but what does all of that result in? Um, well, if we take a look at the Q4, we mentioned how it's the first time we paired it with this motor, um, and that's great for not only equipment weather driving, driving in the snow, but it's good for when you're trying to launch the vehicle or improve your three, uh, zero to 60 time. So one thing we went out with uh, was a 3.9 second zero to 60 time. Uh, that was an early build vehicle that we did uh, in initial testing, and we thought there was a little bit left in the tank there as far as um, some opportunities, so we went out and continued to test. And I'm happy to report here today that our zero to 60 time is best in class at 3.6 seconds on the quadrifolio. If we take a look at how that, that 0 to 60 time compares to not only the vehicles in its class, but some of the other vehicles out there in the marketplace today, to put that in perspective, that's faster than an Audi RS7, faster than the manual transmission GT3911, and the other vehicles that you see up here. I want to walk you through a couple of other, our other performance claims that we're having to make. Most powerful vehicle in its class at 505 horsepower, we have best in class V6 torque at 443 pound feet. Comparing that to some other vehicles that are out there, more powerful than 911 GT3 or Mercedes AMG GT. If we look at uh, horsepower per liter, again, we're best in class there. You can see the other uh, Germans up here on the board. Putting that into perspective here, that's more horsepower per liter than a Nissan GT or Nismo, a Lexus LFA, or an Audi R8 Spider. Power to weight ratio, best in class again compared to our German rivals. And that's better again than, say, a 911. But I think the one thing I'm most happy to talk to you about is the fact that we had a record setting Nurburgring ring time of 7 minutes 51.7 seconds, which is the fastest time ever produced by a four door production utility vehicle, uh, beating out the previous record held by Porsche by a full eight seconds. Now, to put that in perspective on some other vehicles, faster than the last generation Ford GT or the BMW M5 and the other vehicles that you can see up here on the board. But you know, does it really matter that we beat the, the, the last generation Ford? No, not really. It's kind of a cool thing to, to say, and that's obviously why we put it up here. But I could sit here and talk to you all day about how this is the you know, most powerful production engine that we've ever put in here, or we can talk about that we have a standard uh, carbon fiber drive shaft, or talk to you about the five hole wheels or the technologies in here. And it's a great story to tell, but I don't think that's not what's most important. What's most important is the way this vehicle makes you feel the way this vehicle makes you want to drive it harder and faster. It's the vehicle that you walk away from and you look back at because you love it so much. And that's every Alfa Romeo, not just the Stelvio. This is an Alfa Romeo first. This is the vehicle that you want to include in your wedding photos. <laughs> right, Brandon? Yeah. But it's first and foremost an Alfa Romeo, and I'm glad that uh, you all are going to be shortly be able, uh, be able to experience out here on the road and on the track. So I hope we can get you driving some cars. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.